What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown. On Wednesday, President Biden rolled out his plans for the next two economic aid packages, which are different than what has come before. What has come before is primarily stimulus, and you can consider it like packages that bail out the economy and individuals and businesses. The next two packages are considered infrastructure or economic aid packages. These are packages that are designed to spend money to rebuild parts of the economy and create new parts of the economy rather than just bailing out the old parts of the economy. Now, this first package is going to be roughly 2 trillion, probably 2.2 trillion. And it's going to be focused on more of the things like railroads, bridges, grids, with a bunch of the climate change stuff thrown in as well. Now, the way this plan is being presented is that corporate America will foot the bill. Corporations will have their taxes hiked in order to pay for most, if not all, of the cost of implementing or uh, all of this extra government spending. So today we are going to look at who is actually going to foot this bill, even if corporate tax rates do get hiked. Ready? Let's dive in. With this monstrous spending package, this monstrous plan on dumping tons of money into the economy through infrastructure, green and clean energy initiatives, racial equality measures, and other things that are going to be stuffed into this bill, we are seeing an actual monumental change in the direction and the participation of the government in the economy in the United States of America. Should this initiative make it through all the way to get implemented in any form similar to how it's being proposed right now, it would mean that the federal government would have a larger role in the economy than it has for generations. It would account for over 20 percent of total economic output. Now, obviously, politically, when you're going to do something like this, you have to posture as if you're going to make the bad guys pay for it. It's something every administration has done. Right now, the bad guys are the rich and the corporations. And so the solution is right now to hike the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%. Now, I said the word posturing on purpose because that is what this is. It is pure posturing because the way that the government is engaging in fiscal policy right now, backed up by the Federal Reserve's uh, monetary policy, we are in the realm of modern monetary theory. It is not a requirement to extract capital out of specific areas of the economy for the government to be able to inject capital into other areas of the economy. That's what I mean by that is taxes in order to uh, spend. It's not necessary. All that they have to do is increase their debt and they can do that right now, theoretically an unlimited amount they can increase their debt by because there's somebody printing money to loan that money to the government. That's the Federal Reserve. And theoretically, if the goal is economic growth, then extracting resources out of one area to inject them into another area is not going to give you a total economic growth. That's just going to be a redistribution. And so according to MMT and according to fiscal policy and monetary policy right now, you wouldn't want to raise taxes in order to pay for government spending. You'd want to keep taxes the same to inject more money to cause actual growth. But I digress. Right now, they're saying if we raise corporate taxes from 21 to 28%, that will be enough over time to pay for all this extra spending. And here's why that is not true. I'll let you in on a little secret. Corporations don't have to pay taxes, and neither do the rich. Now, I'm not talking about anything illegal, and I'm not talking about loopholes. And when I say rich, I'm not talking about high income earners, the people earning, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Those are not the rich. I'm talking about the people without earned income that own assets. And I'm talking about corporations. See, when you go to work, you make, let's say, $100,000 gross. Your annual salary is $100,000. Do you ever actually see an inflow of $100,000 come into your checking account throughout the course of the year? Absolutely not. Taxes are withheld from your paycheck for your earned income for the taxes on your earned income. And then there's additional taxes uh, beyond just your earned income taxes. There's social security, there's Medicare, and there's state taxes that are going to come out of your paycheck as well, depending on where you live. And those all come out of the total salary that you're going to make. So let's say you're going to, you're going to have your gross salary of hundred thousand, your take home pay, let's going to say, you know, let's say 50,000. After you get that 50,000, then you can go spend that 50,000 on whatever you want. 
So you pay taxes on the total amount that you make and you get to spend what's left over. And that's precisely why the rich don't have earned income. It's the highest cost income there is. You lose most of it to taxes. Corporations, on the other hand, when they earn $100,000 in a year, they get to spend any amount of that $100,000 that they want. So if they make $100,000 in a year, they spend, let's say, 80,000 of it, 90,000 of it. They've got 10 or 20,000 left over. That is what they're taxed on. They're not taxed on all of the revenue that they made. They're only taxed on what's left over after they've spent what they need to spend. So what do you think will happen if corporate taxes go up from 21% to 28%? The businesses are just gonna spend more money. It's not gonna increase tax revenue. This is why people always say that tax uh, revenue and tax rates are not correlated. If you raise tax rates enough, you're actually gonna lose tax revenue because at a certain point, it makes a lot more sense to just spend all that money so you don't have to lose it to taxes. And that's why sometimes tax uh, cuts can lead to an increase in tax revenue because now it's more acceptable to take profits. You don't have to spend it all because you're not losing so much of it to taxes. And so since everybody is doing that overall, even though the percentage is lower on each dollar that's being taxed, the total dollars available for being taxed are a lot higher. Do you think they're taking this into account when they're saying, hey, a tax uh, increase of corporate taxes is going to pay for this spending plan? Absolutely not. It's all things being equal. They're looking backwards and saying, hey, the economy has this much money in profits and we earned this much, you know, in taxes on it as a government. And so if we would have earned, you know, this much, we would have earned that much more money if we would have charged, you know, 28% instead of 21%. So they're looking forward and they're saying, hey, if the economy grows at this rate and we, uh, we are, you know, projecting for the growth in profits, then uh, a 28% tax rate instead of 21% will probably be, uh, be enough to uh, give us an extra boost in income. But nothing is ever all else being equal. When a government changes its tax policy, it changes incentives, it changes behaviors. That means that even when you hike corporate taxes, you're probably not going to have a sizable increase in tax income, tax revenue for the government because corporations will just start spending more. It's not a tax loophole. That's the way that corporations are taxed versus individuals. But the government will have already spent all that money. They're just not making it back from taxes, which means who's actually paying for this? Well, the government has to pay for it first by debt, which is monetized by the Federal Reserve. They're the ones printing the money to purchase all of this debt, to loan that money to the government. And that money's not gonna be coming back out of the economy in taxes near as much as is being projected from just a small hike in corporate tax tax rates, meaning that this new money that's getting spent in the into the economy is actually money created uh, that wasn't there before. It's not redistributed capital, it's newly injected capital. And we all know when you have more money coming into a system chasing the same amount of goods and services, that pushes prices up. Who benefits when prices go up? The rich because, well, when prices go up, that's a direct boost to the top line of companies because that increases revenue, right? When prices go up, revenue goes up. And so prices of assets then go up as well as a result of earnings going up. Well, who's the one that owns all of these assets? It's the rich. Is the cost of living for the rich going up? Absolutely. Does it matter? No, it's offset by more than enough by the rise in their assets that they own. Versus the poor, poor don't own any assets. So cost of living goes up as a result of all this new money being injected into the economy, but the poor don't own any assets to offset the rise in the cost of living. And so it's the poor and the middle class that are actually going to be paying for this, regardless of whether there is a change in taxes or not. Because the only thing a corporation has to do in order to pay whatever they want in taxes is to just spend more money ahead of time. If the government's gonna take all of your profits or half your profits or a quarter of your profits and you don't want that to happen, just spend that money instead. Don't have any profits. Now this is your sign. If you're a contractor, if you're self-employed, or even if you are a straight up wage earner, regular employee, this is your sign to start a business. This is your sign to start a side gig. This is your sign to buy assets as well. Now I have a big favor to ask you. Many of you have answered this question already, but on the community page of my channel, I recently posted a poll there. 
Many of you have taken my courses and have bought my courses and guides from me. And I'm currently working on a few more. And so I want to prioritize what is most interesting to you, what you would most want from me first. So please go and answer that poll if you have an opinion on whether you want a course from me first on portfolio allocation, which would be things like through the lens of Austrian economics, through the lens of hard money, through the lens of inflation and deflation, how to construct a portfolio that grows, has cash flow, is not susceptible to large crashes, big drawdowns, how to uh, diversify properly, but not be so spread out that you don't have any potential gains. So that'd be portfolio allocation. The second one would be active trading. So things like day trading and swing trading, how to properly size your positions, uh, position entry and exit points, proper risk management, technical analysis. That'd be the uh, the uh, active trading one. The third option there would be real economics. So kind of like a basic economics course on how the economic machine actually works, especially in uh, contrast to some of the traditional or modern views of how the economy works through, you know, like MMT or Keynesian or Neo-Keynesians. And so we're going to be looking at all of the different views and uh, how the economic machine actually works. And then finally, the, uh, the the final option there is going to be Bitcoin basics. And so what it is, so like no jargon approach to what it is, uh, how to use it, what the major risks are, what the potential benefits are, how to buy it, how to store it, how to trade it, how to withdraw it, all of that. So if you have any opinion on which of those you would like to see from me first, please head over to the uh, community page of my channel and answer the poll there. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.